Good morning everybody, this is Stephen Pugh of Donington Wood Baptist Church and the Home Bible College. I want to do another series on the pastor's course. This is video 27 and it's B. <laughs> and it's keeping close contact with those that you minister to. Okay, the Christian pastor seeks opportunity to get close enough to be able to help people, to advise them or personally minister to those under his care this is one of the areas in which pastors excel or one of the areas in which they fall down often pastors are so busy with meetings and organization that they do not have the time or space to talk to individual people the shepherd of the flock keeps watch over the sheep he understands them all very well he does the rounds checking them out keeping a special eye on those that are weak or sick. He's an expert in bringing sheep home when they stray. That's a challenge, isn't it? That's what your work as a pastor is, your primary work. You might divide the sheep up in your mind according to their special needs. For example, in a church, there may be A people, that the letter A, A people. These are people who attend regularly or occasionally they just turn up and sit in the building and take in everything going on and even pay attention to the sermon. They're what we call the attenders. These are people who attend. They are present. Now, they may not be present all the time or they might be present all the time. But the important thing is, as far as they go in their spiritual response, they just come and they sit and they learn and they love it. But they come and they're just attending. The next people are the B, uh, B people. And I call these uh, people who are believers in Christ. They're saved. And they know they're saved. And they come whenever they can. And they participate in the service. Because they know the Lord. And this brings a response in their hearts. To the worship and to the prayers. And to the message. So you've got A people who attend. You've got the B people who are believers then you've got the c people now the c people <laughs> they are committed believers these people are active in some form of participation within the church body they actively involve themselves in a ministry of their own however humble it might be they might be deacons of the church who assist in the leadership in its practical ministries these are the c people they are committed believers so you've got the attenders the believers, the committed believers. Now you've got the D people. Now the D people are those young people and old who want to learn more. And in particular, they want to serve God one day and they're looking to the church to teach them. They're, they're what we would call today disciples. They're the students of the Bible class. They are the young preachers of tomorrow. OK, so those are the D people. So you've got A, B, C, D. OK, then you've got the E people. Now, the E people are those who are leaders of the church in terms of eldership. Now, they might be elders in terms of evangelism or in pastoral work, but they are elders. The word elder just means someone that's older, somebody that's a little bit older in life. They may be 40 to 60 or 70, but they're elders and their job is not to reach out to those without and within the church, but they are actively involved in training committed believers and disciples in their ministries. So that's their job. Their job is to look after those who are involved in some sort of ministry within the church body. So you've got A, B, C, D, E, and then you've got the F's, F's. Now, the F people are those who are what you call, in inverted commas, the fathers of the church or the mothers of the church. They're over 60 or they're over 50 and, and many and they have many years of experience. Many, they're very stable, exceptionally stable. They're not just elders. They are they are fathers. Um, Paul talked, he said to the Corinthians, he said, you have not many fathers. These are people that have brought people to Christ. These are people who in the church have been responsible 
in specifically assisting people in their spiritual development. They might be evangelistic primarily, they might be pastoral primarily, but they're the fathers. They're often retired and they have the time to be involved in working with the leadership to encourage and develop the church for the future. Now we have this lovely passage in uh, Philippians chapter 1 verse 3 to 11. He says, I thank my God every time I remember you in all my prayers for you. I always pray with joy because of your partnership in the gospel from the first day until now. Being confident of this, that he who began a good work in you will carry it on to completion until the day of Christ Jesus. It is right for me to think this of you, since I have you in my heart, whether I am in chains or defending and confirming the gospel, all of you share in God's grace with me. God can testify how I long for all of you with the affection of Christ Jesus. And this is my prayer, that your love may abound more and more in knowledge and depth of insight, so that you may be able to discern what is best and may be pure and blameless for the day of Christ, filled with the fruit of righteousness that comes through Jesus Christ to the glory and praise of God. So now for the questions. First question, is your pastoral work how you keep in touch with, sorry, in your pastoral work, how do you keep in touch with everyone. I was talking to a pastor just the other day and he said, yeah, in our church we have quite a lot of people. I said, oh, that's interesting. So how do you keep in touch with everybody? He says, well, we divide the church up and there's various pastors, uh, deacons that work under me and they'll look after five or six and they'll look after 10 and they'll look after seven and they'll look after four and they'll look after 12. He said, and each of them keep in touch with everybody, uh, lead them. They bring them into their homes and they they, they give them entertainment and they give them um, they give them hospitality. When they're sick, they visit them. And so he said the work of the pastor then is to be shared amongst all those involved in helping. I want you to go through the various types of people in your church and ask yourself, how do you help them at the level that they're at? Okay, so you've got the people who are attenders, the people that are believers, the people that are committed. All of them are different. All of them are only at the position they're in at the moment. The question is, what are you doing for each group of people? The second thing is, are you able, with the blessing of God, are you able to move people from A to B? Are you, for example, able to move those who attend to being believers in the Lord Jesus, to go from A to B? Are you able to take those who are believers and bring them up into a, a higher level of of commitment so that's b b's to c's and so on next question is does this give you a strategic insight into the overall mission of your church body and lastly are there some special things that you need to do for these various groups of your church okay so there we are there's something for us all to think about it's very challenging when we start thinking like this I'm, I'm going to look forward to seeing you all next time. Don't forget to like and don't forget to subscribe. Um, and don't forget to press the, the, the ring the bell thing and that will bring more of these videos to you in due course. Well, God bless you all. Bye for now. Bye bye.